Hey everyone, Matt here with the Maya Learning Channel. So if you've been following my most recent videos, you should have a pretty good handle on building effects graphs with the new Bifrost plugin. However, that still leaves two questions. Once you've built the graph, how do you cache it and render your final shot? So here I have the same Trilobot crash scene from my other tutorials. I like the way the smoke looks, but the playback speed is very slow. Also, I can't scrub the time slider either since the effect is being calculated live. To mitigate this, I'll need to go into the Bifrost graph and cache the effect. Now, there's a few different ways to do this, but all of them basically boil down to running the sim through a write node once for each frame, saving them to disk, and then switching to a read node after the cache is complete, to switch Bifrost from calculating on the fly to reading from the cache. Depending on the type of format you want to output to, you'll need to use different read and write nodes too. Or, rather than dealing with all that, you can just use the file cache node instead. This handy little compound handles all this complexity for you, allowing you to switch between reading and writing in all three formats with some easy to use parameters instead. To use it, I'll plug it between my simulation and output nodes, exactly where I would have put the individual read-write nodes. Now that everything is hooked up, let's take a look at the file cache itself. First, I want to point out that it's what's called an experimental compound, as evidenced up here by the orange icon. This just means that the compound is in an earlier state of development, so you want to keep an eye on it to make sure it's working as intended. And you may see changes to it later down the line. As for the properties themselves, they are mostly self-explanatory. Use the mode to set whether the compound will write to or read from the cache. There's also a lazy mode, which will write automatically if it doesn't detect any cache files in the file name directory, and read if it does. Just note that you can't partially write a cache, then read from it, then start writing again later. Once lazy mode stops writing, it switches to read mode and never goes back. If you really want to be sure, I recommend sticking to read-write mode exclusively. Obviously, I'm going to set it to write mode since I don't have a cache yet. There's also a pass-through mode, which just passes the simulation through the node without doing anything to it. This more or less acts like an off switch. Next we have the file name. Unlike a lot of other file name fields in Maya, this one won't automatically default to your current project folder, but rather to the home folder that is set by your operating system. On Windows, this is the My Documents folder by default. However, I'd prefer to put my cache files in the cache directory of my project folder. This is also where I control the type of cache file produced. Bob, or Bifrost object, is the default native format, but you could also change this to .vdb, openvdb, or .abc, alembic. I'll get into the advantages and disadvantages of each later on in this video, but for now I'll stick to Bob. In the properties field, I can designate specific properties to be cached, but how do I know what properties are available? Use a watch point. By default, all these properties are cached, but that can make our file size unnecessarily large. Since I'm using this for rendering, the only properties I really need are voxel fog density, voxel temperature, voxel velocity, voxel component, and voxel tile tree. Note that those last two are added automatically when using VDB. And finally, I can designate a specific frame range if I only want to cache specific frames. Now I'm ready to start writing my cache. Before I do though, let me show you a little trick to speed up the process. If I just hide the smoke in the viewport, it won't have to evaluate and thus will play faster. However, for this to work, you need to have at least one other unhidden BIF object in your scene as well. This is because if all your BIFs are hidden, Maya won't ask Bifrost to evaluate anything and thus nothing would cache. And then I'll play. So now that the cache is complete, I'll just flip the toggle on my file cache to read mode and unhide my BIF object. 
And now playback is faster. And I can scrub back and forth without losing the smoke. If I ever want to change the simulation, I can set this back to pass through, then make and test whatever simulation adjustments I want, before returning to write mode to overwrite the previous cache. So now that the simulation runs a little faster, I'm ready to render my final result. To prepare for that, I can sub in a nicer model and add a Skydom light with HDR. Then I'll do a test render. Now this looks okay, but it's just using the default dumb shader. This is just a flat color that doesn't take into account any of my Bifrost simulation data. Let's smarten it up with an Arnold volume shader instead. To assign a new material to any Bifrost output object, I need to use the Assign Material node. I'll put this after my file cache in the chain, then plug it into the same output port. Now I need to create a material for the smoke, which I'll do in the Hypershade. In this case, the most appropriate material is an AI standard volume shader. And once that's done, I can middle drag it into the graph, just like a transform or shape node. Then I'll just wire it up to the volume material port here. This process would be the same if I were assigning a surface or displacement as well. We're not quite done yet though because a volume shader requires a bit more information, so I'll need to change the density channel to the simulation's voxel fog density, and set emission and temperature channels to voxel temperature, so we hope to make only the temperature channel necessary. Note that you can also use the Bifrost Arrow preset up here to set all these for you. At first the smoke appears white, but that's just because of the default temperature setting. Now if I were to change the density or temperature of my smoke, the material would properly reflect that. All that's left now is to batch render my finished animation.